The first stitch I'm going to show you is a split back stitch and this is really really good for doing lines like this one here on my pomegranate and also lettering. It can also be used as a base for stitches like um, fly stitch and satin stitch to make them a little bit neater and I have used it here, under here and under here. Uh, but we'll come to that when we come to those stitches. But I find it really, really good and it makes a really neat outline for, um, for lettering and lines. You can see that I've started my split back stitch and covered some of the lines of the, the wheel um, here. It doesn't really matter which order you, you um, do them in. I'm um, working in brown, dark brown silk and I'm using a cruel needle. So that's one with a pointy end and a, a fairly small eye, but one that you can obviously get your thread through. I've put a knot in the end and I'm going to start with a waist knot on the outside of my wheel so away from my work so that the knot lies on top afterwards then you can cut off the knot thread it up and um, or stitch it in at the back so that you don't get any um, any knots at the back of your work so i'm going to come up randomly here and i'm right-handed so i'm stitching from left to right you can start anywhere if you're left-handed, you would stitch from, from right to left. Now I'm going to show you two ways to do this stitch. The first way is one that you'll see in most textbooks. So take a stitch down and then come up at the end of that stitch, but through the thread. So you're splitting the stitch and splitting the thread. So then take another stitch and come up at the end of the stitch splitting the thread and then another one and come up at the end of the stitch splitting the thread so the stitch makes a really nice straight line the idea being that you don't have any any gaps or ridges or anything like that. So I'm going to show you an alternative way now because sometimes it's quite difficult to find the end of the stitch with your needle, especially if you're a beginner. So the alternative way to do this, I'm going to start again completely, is to come up Take a stitch down, just like you did with the first one. And then instead of coming up through the stitch, take a, a stitch as you would if it was a normal back stitch, like that, and then go into the ends of the thread. So you can see exactly where you're going. So take a stitch as per a normal back stitch. Normal back stitch, you'd go down here but you're splitting the previous stitch and carry on like that. And I find this is quite a good way if you're a beginner. Now, the only difference really is that um, this one uses slightly more thread. Um, this one, you find the stitch is more elevated, um, but I don't really think you would see uh, the difference. The size of your stitch in each of the cases will depend on what you're stitching. If you were doing really tiny letters, you would do the stitches much smaller. But for this, um, you know, you can, you, you can do um, medium size, larger stitches. When you come to the little circle in the middle, I would make them a little bit smaller. I've decided that I'm going to whip my lines of split back stitch. I've actually already whipped the outer one and it makes it a little bit stronger and a little bit more elevated from the surface. Now whipping is where you, um, you're basically weaving through the stitches so you don't go through the fabric at all other than to start and finish. 
I've started in the same way with a waist knot and I'm going to show you with a different colour so that you can see the effect of the stitch but I'm going to whip just in the same colour as my background but I'll show you in a different colour. So starting anywhere I'm um, right-handed so I've come up to the left of the line if you were left-handed you'd come up to the right of the line because that would seem more natural to you and I'm just using here a tapestry needle which has got a blunt end um, so that because I'm weaving and I don't I don't want to um, split the thread that has already been stitched down so I'm now going to put my needle from right to left through all of the stitches that I've I've stitched down so you can see that you get this sort of nice rope effect if you like so it's a very simple stitch to do and you can do it with lots of different stitches to give um, the desired effect I'm going to show you my Dorset feather stitchery in a minute, um, which uses um, uh, whipping is one of the characteristics of, um, of that type of embroidery. So I'm going to take this out because I'm going to um, do all mine in brown because I don't want this to detract from the stitches that I'm going to do in my, um, in my sections here. Just one word though before I, I, I leave this part, um, when you finish the whipping just take your needle to the back of the work, so on the other side of the thread to where you started and this goes for all the stitches that you're going to do um, really is you're going to just um, thread your thread through the stitches at the back and cut it off to finish. This is my uh, lady in the African sun. And I hope that you can see that various lines here, um, this, this is actually a line of chain stitch that's been whipped with a different colour. So it gives that lovely effect. And in fact, all the stitches here have been whipped. So this blanket stitch here has been whipped and um, it just makes it a lovely effect. Um, you can whip the lines as well. Um, it makes them more elevated. So um, that's called Dorset Feather Stitcher and it's one example of whipping. My wheel is complete with my split back stitch um, which has been whipped. Now I've drawn my lines on with my blue water erasable pen. So there are some blue marks showing here. So I'm simply going to take some spray um, of water and make them disappear. So I'm spraying that on evenly and you might be able to see that the blue marks just disappear. So I'm just going to let that dry obviously before I do any further stitching. So let it dry naturally and we'll come back and do the first lot of stitching.